Hi, everyone, and welcome to today's LinkedIn Live. Um, those of you that are with us today live, um, and also to those who will be uh, watching and listening afterwards. Uh, today, uh, we're really fortunate to have Dr. Jason Worland, who is uh, the founder, inventor, and chief wellness officer of a company I suspect uh, most, if not all of you know, and that is Therabody. Uh, so we're going to talk a bit about uh, the history of Therabody, sort of what they're doing today, where they're headed, and, uh, and what's happening in the space. Uh, but let me bring uh, Dr. Jason uh, in with us. Hi, Dr. Jason. Thanks for coming today. Hi. How are you? Thanks for having me. This is great. Yeah. Yeah. So I know you're you're in Austin today, and uh, thanks for making time. I know there are a lot of other things you could be doing in Austin. And uh, no, this is. I was here. looking forward to this. Great. So um, Therabody is like a household name now. Um, <laughs> I think we made a really successful shift from Theragun to Therabody. I'd like to hear more about that. Um, but beyond sort of the flagship product, uh, maybe the company itself is not as well known. Um, can you tell us a bit about Therabody, um, including the origin story, sort of what, what inspired you to, to create this company? Yeah. Well, I laugh when you say Therabody is a household name because as a, as a, um, I have some landscapers coming through. Sorry about that. Okay. As a, as a founder, when you're creating something that someone will actually say that, you know, that it's a household name, it's, it, it never gets old hearing that. Um, so I'm a, I'm a chiropractor. I was in, in Los Angeles at the time in 2007. Let's go way back to 2007. Um, and I was, uh, just finishing some of my schooling and I had to go from, I had a practice that I'd opened in 2006. And so I was going from my practice to my home to school. And I was mm -hmm. just doing this sort of loop in Los Angeles and I decided to buy a motorcycle. Uh, so one day I was driving along the freeway and uh, in Los Angeles, you can split traffic. And so yeah. I was splitting traffic and uh a car came out of nowhere and I hit the side of this car. Uh, I ended up having some, a lot of soft tissue damage in my, in my right neck shoulder area. Um, and up to that point, I'd never really been a patient. So I hadn't really experienced mm -hmm. this, you know, what you do when these things happen as a chiropractor, I was always the, on the other side of it. So, or at least my perspective. So, uh, that injury is what sort of ca caused a lot of this. Because the, as, as a chiropractor, I knew what I needed, but I wasn't able to get it, give it to myself. And, yeah. and the only other options you had were surgery or medication. And for me as a chiropractor, I'm like, I'm still young. I, there has to be a way to fix this. So I would go to get worked on by my business partner, chiropractor that I was in the same office with, shared the office. And um, that, that whole thing just didn't, fit well with me. I kept thinking, I got to get up in the morning. I'm in so much pain that I got to go see him who loves me. And I love him. Like we're great friends. I know he wants me to get better, but I got to drive all the way into his office. This whole thing was like, what? So I was thinking, okay, what can I do to take the pain away? What do we have in our office that takes pain away? Well, there was mm -hmm. a table that vibrated and I would mm -hmm. sit on that tie table and the, the vibration would at least make the pain, pain tolerable. And I just sort of iterated on that. I, I started in my mind, I'm thinking, well, but what do we have? And I asked a doctor that I work with who's been there much longer than I had. Hey, do you have anything that's, yeah, I have this tool. So I grabbed this tool and I could take it home. But the tool vibrated and, it, and our mm -hmm. bodies accommodate to information really quickly. Like you put a watch on or your glasses or your earbuds or earrings or a necklace, you're done thinking about it. Then you're on to the next thing. And that's body accommodating to that information. So this vibration wasn't strong enough on my body and it was therefore easy for my body to accommodate to that information, meaning it wasn't really effective anymore. And I was experiencing this in, long, in real time. So I'm thinking, what is happening? Wow. Okay, well then if the, if the vibration never leaves the body, what if I had something that came off the body? Oh, I can make that. I grew up, my family had a farm when we were growing up. I didn't grow up on the farm. We spent a lot of time on the farm and watching my uncles and granddad and grandpa from welding to, to, you know, all the different things you learn, you become resourceful. And I, in my mind, I'm like, that's a jigsaw that does this. I can just make yeah. one. So I went to my garage and I made one and I started using it on myself. 
And this experience of that thing getting me out of pain and then allowing me to move through a range of motion and capturing this real time and asking the questions all along, what is happening? Why is this, why doesn't people know about that? Why don't people know about this? How is this? So as I went through this experience, I thought this for sure, someone's thought of this. Right. Can't yeah. be me that just immediately like, so I went back to practice. So my accident was October 17th of 2007. And, and by December of that year, I was incapacitated. I was in so much pain. I couldn't move. January of 2008 is when it's this idea started to come. And by July of 2008, I was almost better. I could go back to practice and I had a really large disc bulge in my neck. Mm-hmm. I was sort of innocent to the idea that this might take some time. I'm like, right, I was yeah. more driven to get back to work. I, I had my hands were my tools and I had to, I couldn't use them because of the pain. So all these things led to this, you know, people ask like, what's the story? What's the origin story? There's so many things that had to happen and my perspective and the fact that I, I knew how to use these things and I knew what they were supposed to feel like on your body. So there's, there's, there's science to this that I was actually experiencing in real time, capturing this data and then sharing it with our scientists years later to validate all this stuff. Cause I, it was magical. Mm-hmm. So I made the first one in 2007. I used it on a, I, I shared this with another patient. This is probably another thing that people need to understand is I didn't think I wasn't sure that this would work on someone else. Right. And I had a patient come in who had ex- exactly the same injury that I did from a traumatic injury. He was a, in a head on bus collision bus driver. Mm-hmm. And it's the first time that I read through the intake form thinking to myself the same thing I thought when I had my injury, there's the guy ha- doesn't have money. He's his, he only has 12 visits a year. And as I was putting this together, I'm thinking, man, I got to show this to him. Cause I think this is the only thing that's going to allow us to stretch his care out. So I showed it to him. He had the same experience. I taught him every time he came in to see me and then I would let him take it home. And then he'd come back and then we'd take the next steps. And I would, I was really familiar with the process he was going through. And I sort of like, Hey, no, no, be strong. Like just use it like this. So him going through that experience and then telling me one day when he was kind of finished with his care, doc, you got to figure this thing out because it saved my life. Like Mm -hmm. that experience was like, okay, guess what? I got to figure this out. So the next eight years, I made five different versions, figuring this out, like from the amplitude to the technique, the how the frequency, like how many times it could touch your body in a second without it overdoing it on the nervous system. So all of these things I started learning in those eight years. I went through two business partners, horrible experiences. Mm -hmm. uh, And I met my business partner who still is my business partner now in 2015. Um, And I like to say he was like the, the third leg of this really cool stool that we were building, you know, it was, my experience of pain and then my, my, my just drive to make this thing, figure it out. And then having someone like Ben come in that really helped the business and really be sturdy up everything. So we grow like a business. So it was, it, it was once Ben and I got together, it just, it was, it just took off like a rocket ship. Oh, we had all wow. What an amazing story. I mean, the uh, part of what I, I love about it is, you, t- you talked about your drive, you had a drive, but you you had a, you had a mission, right? Because you yeah. knew you had something that could bring relief, uh, which was already aligned with your mission as a chiropractor, I'm assuming. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. and then you you took you took all the steps and didn't let go of, uh, of getting it to a place, even through the uh, the not not a good fit partners that you had uh, until you found the right one. That's yeah, and really- it's, I, I, it's it was such a lesson. I'm sure you've had these two in life that that um, you're going to have things come in your way that if you read it wrong, seems like a message to stop. Yes. Yeah. It's like a hurdle. You know what I mean? I'm sure you know that. So, and that doesn't, it's not easy because every time it's not easy. So you think, man, this is so hard. I can't get over this hurdle. No, it's there. So you can elevate and I, you have to learn and grow as, in these situations, you know, this thing took off with all the employees we have. We were talking about this a minute ago, but with all the employees we have, with all the things that are happening in different parts of the world, you have to, you have to expand. 
you know? Yeah. Yeah. Well, so let's see, so you found the partner, uh, you're, yeah. you're a mission driven business. Uh, and, uh, and, and now you're a much different company than you are in 2015. Um, talk a little bit about the company you are today. Yeah, you mentioned a minute ago, we went from Theragun, when, I, when, when Ben and I got mm -hmm. together, it was Theragun. And then we realized later, you know, that this is bigger than Theragun. Like this is actually something larger than that. And it was his experience seeing sort of his friends being introduced to something they'd never seen before. And then my experience growing around the world with the different physios and chiros and, and mm -hmm. body workers that I know and just being like, whoa, this is actually way bigger than that. And that's where their body sort of evolved from because you're thinking, well, what we're doing is for everybody, every body, all every walk. And suddenly this and it kind of happened is there's such a really cool story about that. So. We moved it. We evolved into Therabody through this experience, and and it was sort of like you build it, they will come. There was so many of these pockets of um, modalities that were. It was tough to fund if you're not in the medical world. You know, both feet. It's tough, tough to mm -hmm. manage and navigate that. So, some of these people were friends of mine, and we started, you know, talking about, hey, what if? And suddenly now, you know, we acquired uh, the recovery boots. But we call them recovery air. Um, mm -hmm. that you, and then, then after, shortly after that, there was another acquisition opportunity. And then we were also expanding some of our product lines and it suddenly made sense why we were Therabody. And, and for me, the, the, the interesting thing that I, I think people probably don't know is this started with people in a, in my chiropractic practice that didn't start with athletes and the, the drive and the mission started with getting people out of pain. That's really where it started. And it spilled into these athletes in like 2011, 12, and they started seeing the benefits it does for them because they're so keen on the changes to their bodies. So they just, bam, okay, now it's in the Olympics and pro athletes, it's everywhere. And so people have saw, started seeing this as a professional athlete's product where the origins actually are pain. It didn't make yeah. me run faster, jump higher. You know what I mean? So that, this idea of therabody is people will start to understand it. It's our job to make, make sure in the marketing and everything that they get this, but that's really what it's about. It's getting people out of pain. And the older you get, I'm 54, you, you have the, the, con, the pain changes and it's bigger and it's weirder. And you have to be able to learn how to treat these things and going to a medical doctor is just not feasible in today's life. So being able to have something for you to use on yourself. That's really our purpose. And, and like the drive behind that was keeping something quiet and, and it looked technologically sound and it would, it looked nice on a coffee table and it could sit on the kitchen table and it would fit in. So there were so many things like that that led us down our path of being able to integrate it into people's lives so they can have the benefit all the time, you know? Yeah. Not just when you're, as you say, driving to the chiropractor to see your physician. Yeah. Um, talk about the what's the company today? How um, how many employees do you have? Are you global? Uh, what's, what's the size of revenue? Uh, we've got um, a, just under three hundred employees. Mm -hmm. uh, we have an office in London. Uh, we have an office in Shanghai. Our, our engineers and our some of the tech guys are in Shanghai people would be surprised what comes out of that city and that country as far as that goes. Um, we, and then we have employees in Australia um, scattered throughout Europe. Um, the company itself is focusing on sleep. Um, you know, you think about a Theragun and how does that connect? And that was actually one of the first studies we did is it, it is talked about how this actually turns off your nervous system. So do you, you can just calm so you have a sympathetic parasympathetic. So we did that. So, yeah. so that's been a product that the goggles, the, the smart goggles we have, it has a sleep um, setting to it that helps you fall asleep. And I can't tell you how many people just, oh my God, I swear by those goggles. I wear those every night. So it, our, that's one of our focuses is really getting the information out to people about sleep. And that's worldwide. Um, we just launched a really fun campaign that I hope people will see on TV. Uh, where it shows, for example, a grandpa playing horsey with his grandkids. And it says, if your workout looks like this, 
And then it switches to him using a Theragun on his shoulders by himself. And it says your recovery should look like this. So we're trying to match these experiences with people to, to, to recognize like you shouldn't be in pain. You should be able to help take care of that. And it's most of the time it's musculoskeletal. So that's what's yeah. kind of happening as a company. Um, you know, we don't talk about revenues. It's, it's, it's still a private company. So there's some, some of that stuff that we don't talk about a lot, but we have, um, you know, we have a really amazing product roadmap that people mm -hmm. ask about a lot. And I, it's, it's fun because we have, we'll probably be working on 20 to 25 products at a time mm -hmm. because we're waiting on technology to change or we're working with current technology and we have hiccups with that. But the way sure. that the things have changed in our world just in the last five years, talk about red light and, and how accessible red light therapy was to people. Mm -hmm. It's like in 2020 versus what it is today, it's changed. So th that allows us to now advance on something. And we sometimes don't know that we're going to launch something until bam. Oh, wow. We have this AI. Suddenly now AI is a, a, a an element to the way we can capture information and make it more catered to that specific person. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it's, it's, uh, we're always growing. I, I, our, our, my goal is that we have, you know, a Theragun in every house. It's, and I've said that a lot of times and, and I, I, that I think it's a worthy goal because it, it, a lot, it makes us change the way we do things to get into certain world parts of the world. And it allows our message to resonate as well. Yeah. Um, we talked briefly before we, we went live and, uh, I don't have a Theragun in my house, but I do have this amazing thing, <laughs> which was a free gift from United, uh, on a flight that I flew, um, I think to London or somewhere. But anyway, it's a TheraBody branded little pouch, which is now my gym bag. And, uh, it was, um, it's like the most useful thing I've, I've ever gotten from an airline yeah. other than getting me from place to place. Uh, so you have, a um, some sort of a, a partnership with them. And um, could you say more about that? Yeah, yeah. We, um, it's a really fun story. There's some people that United works with that we, they were familiar with our brand and there was a suggestion made because United was really opening up this idea of becoming sort of the wellness airline. So thinking about your wellness from before you take off to when you're in the air, you know, layovers, lounges what that looks like mm -hmm. they really changed that and they were open to this so they are super open to hey what does it look like and what can we do to bring that to our customers and they introduced us to each other and it just started it was like they were they didn't really have any set intentions and it sort of grew into this really cool relationship so we have um the in-flight entertainment so there's some of our meditation uh mm -hmm. Uh, content from our our product line called Theramind, uh, and it's it's specific frequencies with with different ways to work with your nervous system to calm you down. And there's a breathing exercise on there. So uh, what you have is the is the the uh, what do they call it? It's the in flight kit that you yeah. get. Um, and we laughed about how many of those do people have. We wanted to make it useful. Um, yeah. So yeah, United Airlines been a great. They've been they're a lot of fun, and we'll continue to grow with them in that space. You'll you'll probably see more of us in in as you move through the United Airlines experience. Okay, yeah, I'm typically a um, a, a Delta girl, as I say, but I'm uh, <laughs> definitely was a, definitely was a good flight uh, on United. So uh, you talked a little bit about how you sort of innovate and. I was going to ask stay relevant, but you're you're innovating so much and adding so many new products right now. I don't think it's a, a relevancy question, but um, what's the what's the process? I mean, clearly you have an incubator where you have a lot of things going on. You said and sometimes yeah. something will bubble up. That's a great question. Um, you know, there's it, it changes in the early days. It was having conversations with people that were um, what we like to say at the tip of the spear. So, mm -hmm. you know, trainers, athletic people that work with the best athletes in the world and the best teams in the world. 
and asking them where are the where are your challenges? What are you dealing with? And and is that something? If we solve that issue, is that something that would help the masses? So yeah. these are questions we asked, you know, in in 2018, 2019, and even later. But now it's really how do we get? A, we have a lot of technology. We have a lot of uh, products, um, and I call them solutions. That's why I hesitate. We have a lot of solutions. If you look on our website about how these things can work, but now it's really our job to make that um, legible to mm. a regular person, because the a, a physio, a massage therapist, people that are in that space, they'll jump on our website and they, oh yeah, I need one of those, and I need probably would use one of those, but a person that's sixty five that has been having you know a lot of body aches and pains and and they don't know what some of these work and they see so much out there, you know, so we've really focused our, uh, from, from the early days, I talked about a study we did in the early days for mm -hmm. sleep, science and technology, we ha it has to be validated. So if it's not scientifically proven, we're not going to launch it. We have a lot of ideas that people come in with. And, you know, I can't tell you how many people see me on the street. You know what I would do if I were you? Hey, have you thought of this? And it, it, we, it, we have a ton of ideas. Which is interesting because that's how your idea came about, right? That's right. how theory came about. Yeah. Yeah. It's, and so I'm always open to that. I want to yeah. hear, you know, people are asking me, have you thought of this? And I said, yes, you know what? I have thought of this. Take my number down. And if you think of a really good solution, I would love to hear it. I'll work with you on it. We've added uh, some other people that aren't part of our company to our patents because mm -hmm. of that type of situation. Friends of mine that thought of something, brought it to us. It originated with them. So we want them to be a part of that. So that's, and you ask like what sort of drives it? Well, what right now, what's driving us is we know what we have and we know other people that know what we have. We just need to get that out into the world. So people understand that this is actually for, musculoskeletal pains and aches it, and yeah. we all have that it's not just the athletes that experience that yeah. from a technology standpoint you mentioned <laughs> excuse me ai in terms of being able to parse data you mentioned red light um, are there other technologies that you see that are uh, going to play in the future of physical therapy and wellness uh, you know i think the the data collection is mm -hmm. I feel like that's really where things are going to continue to focus because as we've learned with AI, that's why AI is so powerful is everything is so different. And, and the access that you have to say an injury, um, I was with some, some really smart kids in Ghana who were in a techno tech school and they'd come up with this idea of an app that could match AI with an injury. So if you sprained an ankle, you could basically take a picture, send it in, and this AI would match, and then you would get a solution back. What's the best thing to do? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, that's that kind of thing is what drives a lot of this, in my opinion. Um, and it's, it's not just the AI. It's being able to gather information, breath work, what's your heart rate, mm -hmm you know, yours, not mine, not, not average, like what's your heart rate throughout the day? Like, those are things that we, if we captured that, then we would really, it'd be a lot easier for us to kind of get in our body. So much of us are stuck in our head. And that's really another goal is to like, get in your body and feel what's going on. So if you're kind of know, oh, I'm listening to my heartbeat. Oh, there. And then you're in your body because you're recognizing your heart rate because you know how important that is. Those are like little steps you know, integrated messages that we have in our products. Mm -hmm. These are conversations we have when you ask about what helps us make these decisions. So it's, it, it Tim, who, who is our science um, and innovation director. He love his, his main goal is to integrate everything into people's lives. It's behavior mm -hmm. change. And how can we make that happen in a positive way? So yeah. there's, it's a, it's a, <laughs> Oh, I'm just realizing I'm on this, on this, I'm on my, I'm on a stool. You're letting me preach. I get so excited about this. It, there's so much possibility to help people 
not being to, to you know, have less yeah. pain. Yeah. Well, and people are having, um, at least I think people that are going to be listening and seeing this, they're having more and more experiences of, of uh, gathering data and getting the feedback and having it help them. I'm, I have my aura ring, right? We yeah. many people have their, their Apple watch um, or, you know, whatever your Garmin, whatever it is that you, you choose to wear, but just ways to get feedback about what's going on in our body so that, so we can make behavior changes and see what happens. So um, I'd say that the market is primed for all these things. Um, speaking of primed market, I want to talk a little bit about um, the corporate wellness market uh, because that's mm -hmm. a it's booming, right? I, I saw numbers like fifty six uh, billion dollar market today, expected to reach about one hundred billion by twenty thirty two. Are you um, focused on uh, corporate or enterprise sales as well as individual? Yeah, we actually have a corporate sales um, group in our company uh, and they are really cool to let me in sometimes. <laughs> um, but we look at corporate wellness as physical and mental uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. experiences in the office. And what I'm seeing is companies, large companies are now, before it was, okay, what open space, metaphorically, but before it was kind of like, meaning just a few years ago, it was like, well, what, what, what empty space do we have? We can just put something in there. Mm -hmm. And and now they're recognizing, oh, wow. And they're actually, they're actually planning for space and they're putting budget towards these spaces. Yeah. So they're recognizing how important this is. Um, our lives are so much different than they were when it was the nine to five typical, you know? So we also are evolving in that space. What does it look like? What do they experience? How much education is there? Um, so we have a whole, an entire team that is involved with that. We work with hotels, hospitality. We mm -hmm. do a, a lot of things. I've, I've done some things with the Amman hotel around mm -hmm. this kind of an idea. So yeah, it's, it's a, it's a, it's an important aspect for sure. Yeah. I think the, for me, the whole impetus behind sort of the chief wellness officer and you being one, you can certainly educate me here must be around how do you. How do you create a culture that prevents the burnout that's really geared towards um, towards wellness, sort of getting in front of the problem uh, prevention, um, in addition to sort of what we think about is the sort of the you know I'm I'm stressed out I need to go meditate um, you know <laughs> stuff yeah yeah I mean I look at it this way you, you wellness is a practice. So mm -hmm. wellness are the practices that we do on a daily basis that measure up to our health. So your health can be measured, right? Mm -hmm. So if I, I can measure all sorts of things with your body, but the wellness is what needs to, your wellness practices are what needs to change. Mm -hmm. So as chief wellness officer, I'm looking at this translation from inside our company. Tim and I have these conversations all the time about how can we prove what we see? And mm. it can we use a cohort from our office that is that really we did this with Aura. We've done this with a lot of other companies. We're in the middle of this with, with the large one right now that hopefully the results are good. But we take that information. And as a wellness officer, I'm looking at that. Whoa, OK, how can I take that now and, and broadcast that to the world? Mm. And that's literally what I'm thinking. So you imagine imagine the relationship I have with Cristiano Ronaldo and we have this conversation that's the biggest, largest person in the world in some in the in the social space, right? Yeah. So, oh my gosh, bam, that's that's me trying to get this information out there because if people turn like, wait, he won't use his theragun. Wait, theragun's their body. What's their body? If they can get them to that point, I really want them to understand what we're talking about as a company and it's wellness practices. It's doing things consistently every day to keep your body it we've, we've stamped longevity on it we've done all these different things it, it does make you look younger it does give your body longevity wellness practices it's hard but we you everyone anyone knows that successful that experiences success knows when you do hard things it pays off and that's one of the things about wellness is not you know it's not easy you got to find some time to put this into your life or your health will change for the worse. So 
I, I say this, I'm not chief health officer, I'm chief wellness officer. Our health is, you know, managed by your primary care provider and you with your aura, with these other things. So that's where it comes from. And it's, it's, it was uh, at first it would be like, what is this? What do you do? Um, and it's, it's more, it's, it's as much external as it is internal with the company. Yeah. Terrific. Well, um, I have a thousand other questions I could ask you, but I think that's probably the, the highest and best note that we could end on. So uh, thank you so much, uh, Dr. Jason Worsland, for uh, for joining us today. Again, we're um, uh, with Dr. Jason, who's the founder, inventor, and chief wellness officer now uh, at Therabody. Uh, thanks again, and best of luck to you and your team. Thanks, Karen.